Have a guess, ladies and gentlemen, how much I give every year to animal charities. Have a guess. If I pay... <laughs> <laughs> no? Nope. Oh, Hundreds of thousands. <laughs> <laughs> Do you even know who I am? <laughs> That's fucking optimistic. <laughs> Fuck-all is exactly right. <laughs> I realise some other people said nothing, but nothing is not the same as fuck-all. <laughs> Giving nothing to an animal charity would be, I'm sorry, I forgot. <laughs> fuck-all is much more, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> No. <laughs> and I'll tell you why I give fuck-all to animal charities. It's because there are charities out there for sick and dying children. I don't give anything to them either. <laughs> but it's the principle of the thing. Those are the charities I don't give to first. <laughs> You know why they raise all that cash to dig wells in Africa? So when they're finished, they can throw money in and wish for food. <laughs> One of my favourite things to do on a busy Saturday afternoon, yeah, is, you know the animal rights people you get in the middle of town? They've got a trestle table out, just sort of outside the shops, and they've got quite grisly posters up of animals in distress. If you're an animal lover, it is heartbreaking to see. And they've got the leaflets and the petitions that you can sign. And they've got four main posters wherever you go in the country. There's, there's an emaciated dog in a tiny cage, a, a cat that's been shaved with wires coming out of it, a monkey missing the top of its head. And you can tell it's still alive from its eyes, but obviously in horrible pain. And a rabbit with stuff being poured in its eyes to test whether it's safe for us, I'm guessing. Well, what I like to do if I'm bored on a Saturday afternoon, I walk up to that table and go, I'll have the one of the monkey, please. <laughs> Easy, easy, let's just think this through, because bestiality, a lot of people just write off as a terrible thing. Let's look at both sides. Let's say you fuck a cow, and that could happen. You sound like a nutter. No, let, let's imagine you fuck a cow. You haven't actually harmed the cow. Cows are fucking enormous. You're not going to trouble it with your tiny cock. But, but, you know, but you've probably distressed the animal. Daisy's probably thinking, what the fuck is he up to? On the upside, though, you've had a whale of a time, and if you have a baby with a cow, it'll be a minotaur. <laughs> mm. It's like Bully from Bullseye. <laughs> Just putting it into terms he'll understand. Every year in this country, thousands of dogs are needlessly and pointlessly destroyed. Every night, hundreds of homeless people go hungry. <laughs> All I'm saying is... <laughs> it wouldn't happen in Korea. I would like to take this opportunity to recommend Korean food to each and every one of you. Their cuisine is delicious, their delicacies. They're the dog's bollocks. <laughs> I got stopped by one of those charity muggers. You know the ones with the clipboard in the high street? And you think, oh, I've dodged him, and then there's another... Oh. They work in teams, I don't know how they do it. Anyway, I got stopped, I got cornered. He said, can I have a word about the homeless? I said, certainly. Lazy. Off you fuck. <laughs> I was in London and I, I saw a homeless guy with a dog on a piece of string. Classic look for a homeless guy. <laughs> and I was walking by and the homeless guy said, could you spare some money for food? And my friend said, eat the dog, then we'll talk. <laughs> Even I thought that is harsh. <laughs> I'm joking, I didn't. Truth be told, there was no friend there, I said it. <laughs> I was just checking to see you thought it was funny first. <laughs> Marcus, OK. Moral dilemma for you, all right. Anne Widdicombe, George Clooney, if you had to. <coughs> You'd go for Anne Widdicombe? Are you mental? <laughs> she's got a face like a bulldog licking the piss off a nettle. <laughs> She's a hell of a size, you're a slip of a lad, she'd fuck you in half. <laughs> and that is only where your problems begin, because I imagine her peachy pouch, her Lala, her Fufu, her Wendy, her special lady garden, call it what you will, I bet it looks like a badger that's been hit with a shotgun. <laughs> I bet there are police divers that would be squeamish about going down on that. I bet it looks like a bulldog eating mayonnaise. <laughs> I bet George Clooney's got the prettiest cock you've ever seen. <laughs>
Why don't you just spit roast her? You're suggesting I double team <laughs> Anne Widdicombe with George Clooney. <laughs> now that is a celebrity sex tape that would sell. <laughs> This is the phrase I use to do the Scouse accent. This is the phrase I have in my head to, to get me started in the Scouse. I want some chicken and a can of coke. I want some chicken and a can of coke. I want some chicken and a can of coke. A can of coke. I want some chicken and a can of coke. The little head bobble just comes if you say it a few times. I want some chicken and a can of coke. Well, let's make the Scousers feel at home. Let's everyone. On three, I want some chicken and a can of coke. <laughs> okay, one, two, three. <laughs> Fantastic, Birmingham. <laughs> Bloody well done. I know. Now, obviously, obviously, that's just to get you started. Once you get started, then you can say something properly, authentically, scouts. I want some chicken and a can of coke. I'm going on the rob. <laughs> I've got to get a prezi. Have you got pets? Who's got pets? Yes? Yeah. I can't have sex if the dog is looking at me. <laughs> Those big eyes looking up as if to say, what are you doing? <laughs> and that's why... <laughs> I didn't fuck a dog. <laughs> we made love. I've been with the same girl for eight years and we're very happy together, but how's this for mental? She still gets annoyed if I use her toothbrush. That's mental, isn't it, when you consider how intimate we've been over those eight years? And if you can tell me a better way to get dog shit out trainers... <laughs> I'd love to fucking hear about it, because there's nothing final. <laughs> dog excrement can blind a child. But it's much easier just to use a finger. <laughs> If you really want to be sure, smear dog shit all over both fingers. <laughs> From the shoulder, jab. <laughs> when I was at school, a girl called Alice wanked off a dog for three cigarettes. I know what you're thinking. How did a dog get cigarettes? <laughs> Have you ever got mixed up between car booting and dogging? <laughs> it's embarrassing, isn't it? I paid 50p to fuck a guy's wife. Dogging, or pay and display, as I like to call it. <laughs> or park and ride. <laughs> In show business, they say never work with children or animals, and nowhere is that truer than porno. <laughs> <laughs> no one likes looking at sick and degrading pornography. More than me. <laughs> and, and one friend I have who has a diving school. <laughs> Speaking of which, I'm thinking of starting a charity sending blind kids to Disneyland. Well, telling them. <laughs> no, it's not the same, but my dog, uh, my dog's gone, well, he's lost an eye, and he's got, well, the vet reckons he's got about 30% peripheral vision in his, in his uh, remaining eye. Who thinks I should get the vet to, to put him down? <laughs> no. <laughs> Canal it is. If you'd wanted to live, you would have won the fight with a badger. <laughs> I was looking after a friend's cat while my friends went on holiday and I was worried about overfeeding the cat, so I asked her about it because I thought, well, she'll know about that sort of thing. Here's what she said. She said, don't worry, cats aren't pigs like dogs. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> cats aren't pigs like dogs. <laughs> Good, well, that's really clarifying. <laughs> A chicken that has had its head chopped off can run the entire length of a football pitch before it dies. That's what I call an opening ceremony. <laughs> when I was at school, when I was 17, my mate Anthony, on his 17th birthday, brought in a 125cc motorbike. He thought he was the dog's bollocks. He came in. We, we all went, it's really dangerous, man, just be careful on that, yeah? He went, yeah, dangerous, whatever. Think about how many birds I can pick up with this. I thought, well, unless you join a stunt team, one. <laughs> what is it about being blind that makes you want to walk the dog the whole time? <laughs> I, 
Any other bad gifts? You got what? What? what sir? A dog pooper scooper. <laughs> Do you have a dog? At the time, yes. At the time, yes. <laughs> the fuck have you done with your dog, dude? <laughs> what happened to your dog? <laughs> you don't have him anymore. Oh, <gasps> Toby's mum ate him. <laughs> the fat bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, dude. Um, no, there are some stunning-looking women in here this evening and some right dogs. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> I'm joking. No one in here is stunning. <laughs> Apparently, taking the dog for a walk is a good way to find a woman. But what if you want to find a woman who's still alive? <laughs> On bonfire night, I hope our neighbours keep their pets locked up because there's something about fireworks that makes me really horny. You don't get many. Are you cat people or dog people? What would you say, cat people or dog people? Because to me, it all tastes the fucking same. <laughs> people. A dog is for life, not just for Christmas. So do be careful at the office party. <laughs> I saw a sign in the park. It said, "Remove dog nuisance." So I shot a poodle. <laughs> I was up in North London. I saw a guy in the high street with a guide dog and a white stick. And I went up to him. I went, "You must be blind." He said, tell me something I don't know. I said, there's a tree over there. <laughs> don't be a dick about it. <laughs> I've had an idea for a TV show. It's called Jim Will Fix It. <laughs> it's just me spaying cats. See if you think this is romantic. Really, I'm asking the ladies. Do you think this is romantic? I've got a friend, she's getting married at the end of the summer, and her fiancé has designed the wedding ring. He's quite a talented artist. Picked out the diamond when he was down in South Africa. Quite a talented artist, done sketches. Taken them to a jeweller in Hatton Garden who's putting the whole project together for him. That's romantic, isn't it, ladies? Yes. Yeah. I think it almost makes up for the fact that she's clearly marrying a homosexual. <laughs> <laughs> she's going to have an amazing ring, not much of a wedding night. <laughs> I imagine it'll be something along the lines of, come to bed, darling. I'm just going to walk the dog in the park. <laughs> we don't have a dog. I'll be in the park. <laughs> Obviously, it's a very complex area. Could you tell me, is it wrong to breed piglets specifically for the purpose of weaning paedophiles off babies? <laughs> Only I'm thinking of starting a company with the slogan, they'll squeal, but not to the cops. <laughs> Who picks up guide dog shit? <laughs> Any other last problems? Anyone else got anything going on? My dog just died. Your dog just died? <laughs> hmm. And what's, what's... Well, that's very sad, sir. What, what's... Specifically, what's the problem? Do you not live near a canal, or...? <laughs> Do you suspect your Korean neighbours? <laughs> what, what did he die of? Do you mind me asking? Uh, cancer. Cancer, brilliant. Brilliant. Well, we've already got a dead animal. <laughs> and now we've parlayed cancer into this. So this is comedy fucking gold. <laughs> I mean, I can't see this not making the final cut on the DVD, sir. I, <laughs> I cannot see a world where a dog dying of cancer. Because <laughs> if there's one thing I know about the British public, it's cancer dead dog jokes, they fucking love them. <laughs> Thanks for your help. Hello, I'm Jimmy Carr, and uh, I'm announcing a new tour. It's called Jimmy Carr Laughs Funny, because, you know, I do. I go to jimmycarr.com for dates and tickets, and then, uh, you know, I guess buy a ticket and come and see the tour. I laugh funny, so can you. Come and see me. <laughs>